Welcome to Rig. We got some first time guests, so welcome to you. And welcome to yeah, welcome. Thank you for coming. What a better way to start out the new year than with our rig today. And Miss Katie, who started off, she's here tonight. We'll get some good golden nuggets. Uh, I think everybody's seen this on the flyer, if you would. We get this room because they we agree to come hungry and thirsty and tip. And they let us use this room and we love them. I think everybody knows this by now. Red up means I'm good. Green, either I'm thirsty or hungry. And if it's red, they'll leave you alone all night long. He found out at our first meeting about three quarters of the week. We're like dying and thirsty. Nobody was in here. <laughs> Happy 2023. Tonight's agenda, you've been doing the networking. I'm going to kind of spit through some announcements as fast as possible to give Katie as much time up here. And we're going to do some introductions in a few minutes. We're going to have some haves, walks, some ONGs. That's good. That's oh my goodness, or oh my goodness. It flows both ways. We learned with both of them. In our mastermind, in your 2023 plan. Katie's on, I'll give you a warning now. Katie's going to want you to get up in groups of two to three. And I think you're kind of there now. That good? All right. You may hear about some good deals tonight. You may hear about some people. You go, man, it sounds like Kurt walks on water. Man, I want to get to know him. Before you do that, go over to say Jim and Jim. You know what, Kurt? <laughs> do you do deals on people, projects, and any deals? We'll let them stand up and present it, but we don't do any kind of background checks. But do your due diligence. And it goes for uh, service providers as well, right, Kurt? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Contractors, etc. We are all over the web. Uh, we were on Meetup. We got off. We're back on Meetup. We're getting uh, a few following on there. If you're a member of Meetup, I'd appreciate it if you would go and join the rig page on Meetup. Just kind of help us get out and reach more people. It's free. And this one's still, I keep this in here because this is still growing. We got some active Wednesday night chats. Every Wednesday night, we host a room on there. Different subject. Ken has done one on 1031 Exchange. Dave has done one on land. Uh, we've had we have a good topic here. It's free. It's listen only, so you can wear your late night clothes or early morning clothes. I do a lot of the early morning club couch, clubhouse chats and bed, so it's great app. There's a lot of education out there. There's some uh, Jerry Springer shows out there on it. You just got to be careful with the you know, oh, the Burr Club. Oh my God, there's a wealth of knowledge here. There probably three or four times. There's the co-manager sitting in the back back there, Mr. Shane. He can tell you all about Burr and Clubhouse. He's the one that got me on there and he created a monster. Well, I'm all over now. We got three levels of membership. As our guests know, first time guests are free. After tonight, if you'd like to join, if you'll join by yourself, $100 a year. If you have a significant other, or a business partner you want to join, it's $175. And if you have a business where you want to come in and promote your business, have some time up here, that's $250. And if you've got four or five people in your business, they will all be covered under that business plan. And each month, we pick a business out of the not out of the I'm not list. And we ask them to call and share about themselves. And tonight is no different. And it's our very own the um, three R insurance. <laughs> and here's two of the R's right here. So guys, come on up. This is all yours. I'll take pictures while you're doing that. Big button forward and a little button back. What's your doing? All right. That's well, thank everybody for coming here tonight. Um, this is unfortunately uh, my um, house. Um, we're a free insurance agency. We're a local independent insurance agency. Uh, Bonus Sons team. A um, little bit of background on this. We had, unfortunately, we had a fire at our house here on July 12th. I was the cause of it. Don't grill hamburgers and don't turn up and forget to turn up the gas grill. Not a good thing. Um, so I thought we'd kind of just go through because many people are having want to know what the insurance is, mm -hmm. how much it is like and how it pays. Um, and not, not many people, unfortunately, don't have to, have to experience a large loss like we were going through. So we thought we'd kind of share what we've gone through on the, this large loss and where we're at and after six months today. <laughs> so It's been fun. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our, our policy, and the three R stands for right coverage, right value, right agent. Takes all three to have a good policy in place. Because uh, I can sell you a piece of paper, it says insurance on it. What coverage do you have? How much coverage do you have? How much is it going to pay? So, our dwelling policy, we have $460,000 on the dwelling. So, there's ways to up that 
that doesn't cost you a lot of money. Um, our personal property was 230. Uh, we had 24 months of loss of use. Loss of use, we're in a house right now paying us, uh, our insurance company is paying us. $6,000 a month for the house that we're staying in. That's furnished. <laughs> So, so okay. unlimited use uh, amount of money, but it's 24 months. People up in Boulder, a lot of those people had dollar amounts. They're running out of money. And some of them only had 12 months. And I've heard there's only like one or two houses that have been completed in that fire just over a year ago. So, um, so I was talking about increasing our dwelling coverage. So we have an additional replacement cost of 50%. So that's an additional 50% of that $460,000. So we have an additional $230,000 over and above that for the rebuild of the house. And you can see that's our living room and um, wonderful job fire did. Um, our exact, so adjusters use Xactimate for all claims. It's an industry-wide tool that they all use. The um, replacement cost of our house is $649,670. We go back a slide, we only have $460,000. That's where that additional replacement cost comes in and it's gonna get us to where we're gonna be able to rebuild the house. Um, the extra cash value, because insurance companies pay you on the actual cash value, even though you have replacement cost, they wanna make sure that you replace it. Most, um, but there's a picture of our trusses. Um, I did a good job barbecuing them. I call that <laughs> alligator. <laughs> um, so basically between the 649 and the 531, there's about $117,000 of recoverable depreciation that we have. The initial check from the carrier was $509,000. So we've already bitten, eaten into our additional replacement cost on that. Just for the initial check. So. And then we have $230,000 on contents and uh, the insurance company is slow to come around on that. We've gotten about $70,000 uh, from our uh, contents. We walked out of the house with the uh, clothes on our back. Was an interesting experience. So what, what they say, what you sh what should you do so you get most of your money back for your personal plug? Are you supposed to take a video or what are you supposed to do? Well, fortunately, um, <laughs> this Marshall fire. By, uh, by the grace of God, I had the Marshall fires. I ran through the house taking pictures of, of everything in the house. I didn't do a super thorough job, but I did a decent enough job to where the adjuster knows what we had in the house of what so she can she's going through those pictures of course i, I don't don't envy her she's going through all those pictures trying to figure out what was salvaged what was crashed what's and pay us out on that so at the least at the least go through room by room take a picture of wall by wall by wall open up each drawer in your dresser or whatever people open up each cabinet and take a picture of that that way you have some type of record of what you have um, that's a good question. There, there are apps you can pick up. Some are free, some cost. You can find them for your phone, iPad. Uh, you can take pictures of each room, and then you actually document some things of what you have of higher value things. And I've also told people, I said, even a quick way is get a spiral notebook. Oh my gosh, go back to the seventies. <laughs> uh, but go room by room and just start listing down and just do a 360. What would it cost me to replace this room? And a lot of people, and open up the cupboards in the kitchen. Most people do well in the in the entertainment room, you know, where the TV is and stuff like that. They don't do so well in the master bedrooms and in the kitchen because everything's behind. It's in the cupboards, it's in the dress, dresser drawers, so on and so forth. So those are the things that people mostly mess up on. Um, under the mattress is not insured. <laughs> up to a thousand dollars. So some things we learned from this. So our house was insured at two hundred fifty-two dollars a square foot. We have about eighteen point five square feet above ground. We should have been around that three hundred dollars a square foot mark. Well, that's that's a, even your insurance agents are underinsured. <laughs> so how we came up with that three hundred dollars a square foot is we have several contractors uh, in our agency that we insure. Uh, and we talked to them, and they said 300. Uh, the contractor I've hired, uh, he says, man, from ground up, yeah, absolutely, uh, 300 dollars would, would would take care of it. So that's where our starting point is. Now, if you got a small home, it's in uh, Commerce City or in other parts of the Colorado, that is just a you know 800 square foot house. Yeah, you we can lower that amount to a smaller 
per square footage. Unfortunately, the insurance companies have not kept up. Swept and Marshall has not kept up is what we use for our tools to come up with a replacement costs. And unfortunately, those are undervalued by a lot. So and that was even short on ours when we even after the loss when we ran it, it was short of what it needed to be. So um ordinance or law coverage, this is an interesting one. So because we have to do so many upgrades to the house to bring it up to code, we have 10% of that coverage A. So this what forty nine forty seven thousand dollars that we have basically for code upgrades. Because the house is older, we should have been higher at 20% or more on that. Um, that's our fault. Um, it's just things get things get messed down. So our house was built in 71, 50, 50 years old. We had aluminum wiring. Uh, wow. Everybody hired anybody hire an electrician? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anybody bought wire lately? Uh, copper? Yeah. So um, that's uh, so we're a little short on that. Uh, well, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Um, the fire damage <laughs> was mostly to the roofing structure. So when the fire rolled, it, it got into the attic and just ran through the attic. Um, fortunately, it didn't burn any of the walls. But um, because of that, because the house was built in 71, we have popcorn ceilings. So popcorn ceilings contains asbestos. Most of our stuff was destroyed because of asbestos. All of our contents. Pretty much, there were like three rooms in the house that were deemed clean from asbestos. Everything else has been destroyed. Um, so that's an expensive cleanup. That ended up costing us around sixty thousand dollars just to have that thing cleaned up. So my house right now is down to the studs. You got the brick on the outside down to the studs. Uh, that's my house right there. Uh, we it looks did like we, right now. We removed the hardwood floor since it's burnt and warped because of the water, but uh, it's been cleaned of smoke and uh, asbestos, and that's where we sit. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah, we're, like I said, we're six months today. Um, we're still waiting on permission from Jefferson County. We're um, unincorporated, so can't go yeah. through the city. <laughs> um, so what we've learned on this, start the process as soon as possible if you have to go through a large loss. It's gonna take longer than you expect, especially if you're gonna make changes to the home. We plan on expanding it a little bit, but it's taken a hell of a lot longer than what we thought. Do your research on your contractor. Um, emotions are going to cloud your judgment on that. We, we hired one contractor. He promised us the world. So we can do our due diligence on that. Shame on us because he played on our emotions. Um, he put us behind by a good three months. Yeah. Well, why? Uh, partly is uh, the asbestos put us by about two months, just that, and that was out of his control. But he did not start the process. What's the first thing you do when you build a house? Draw a plan. What's the second thing you do? Draw a budget. Had neither of those. Sixteen yeah. weeks in, we had neither one of those. So we decided. That's when I'm just. Fired. That's when we fired. <laughs> As for, that's one contract you won't recommend. Uh, Correct. No. <laughs> Ask me, I'll tell you privately and not in the public. Yeah. Ask for estimates for the debris removal and cleaning of contents before the project begins. So it cost us $40,000 for them to remove, to pack up the contents and store it for us. What that, the volume of that we have, most of my garage was uh, salvageable, just had smoke damage. We had some of the basement we was able to salvage. Bedroom. Uh, in a bedroom. Uh, it all fits in a one car garage. So and it's forty thousand dollars what they charged me to pull it out of the house and put it in boxes. It would have charged me another seventy thousand dollars to clean it. None of my stuff is cleaned of smoke. So we're gonna end up doing it ourselves. I'm going thirty thousand dollars. Sign me up. <laughs> Have a find or some, or advisor remove review your estimates before you commit to them. Second set of eyes, somebody that is disinterested is always a good idea. If we would have done that, we would have been we could have saved some money. Um, ask your agent for referrals. They have, typically your insurance agent should have a good network of um, disaster remediation referrals that he's, uh, partners that he's worked with, or contractors, or even just other people to go talk to. Um, or you even ask your agent, because they do see stuff like this um, fairly frequently. Ask them for reviews. Ask them for them to take a look at it. Um, public adjusters, they're, uh, they're good, but use them, use them wisely. 
you need to know the cost for their services and what's um they can't slow the process can't claim down the claims process down but it is if you're not getting anywhere through insurance com company you might want to consider that but use them use them wisely the biggest thing ask questions um ask questions of the contractor ask questions of your agent ask questions of your of your Adjuster, we've asked our adjusters many questions, and they I'm tired, I'm sure he's tired from hearing from us. <laughs> Not yet. But um, <laughs> it's it's a large, it's emotional. It's going to suck, but you do get through it. Um, it's been it's been eye opening, and we've been a lot of our clients. Have been not, this is what we've been talking about. Make sure you've got the proper coverages. I'd rather pay for the insurance on this end than pay for it on the other end. Not have my house rebuilt. Um, Talk to the people up in uh, Marshall Fire. They wish they would have spent a little bit more on their uh, their insurance. One thing you have to be careful of is don't go cheap on insurance. Insur insurance has gotten expensive. I'll tell you straight up. My job last year was hell, and it's going to be hell again this year. So get ready. You're probably looking at another fifteen to twenty five plus percent increases on your property insurance. I just watched a webinar last uh, week about it, and that's going to be what they was talking about. Deductibles are going to go higher, and prices are going up. Insurance companies are struggling to make a profit. You look back at uh, the hurricanes we've had here in the last 10 years has been huge. They were talking about that. Uh, over the last 50 uh, years, uh, we've had... Uh, Oh, it was ten, uh, ten major Cat Five hurricanes. The last one like the last six years, I think. And, so and, uh, six of them was in the last uh, six years. So you go out. Wow. It's it's been it's going to be a wild ride for property. Um, uh, then we've got uh, the, on top of that the fires. The fires in California. The fires in all of Western California. I mean the Western United States. I remember last year. Western United States was on, or two years ago, Western United States was on fire. East Coast was soaking wet. It's having floods and everything else going on. Well, those are all cat losses, catastrophic losses to insurance. And what's driving this is insurance companies buy insurance as well. It's called reinsurance. And so they'll take a, so they will take a $100 million deductible. So they'll pay the first $100 million, then they have a big fire that comes through or big hailstorm in Colorado, that's a billion dollar loss, they will come back and they will say, okay, we'll take the first hundred million, you take the next 500 million, and they pay that reinsurance. Well, the reinsurance market has shrunk, shrunk and they have said, we are at capacity. We do not want any more such and such. We do a lot of mountain homes. Since June, I have not been able to write a mountain home. I can't find insurance. I've got six carriers, six places I go to for surplus lines to get mountain homes coverage. I can't find it. So it's insurance is going to be a wild ride this next few years. If you have, if you need questions, if you want, if you have a good deal, we'll let you know. We're happy, more than happy to review your policies. Say, hey, this is what you're missing. This is what you're not missing. You've got a good deal, or hey, here's what you might want to consider. We're here just to. We're well, advised. You'd like, to, you'd like to learn your business, but we're here to advise you and help make sure that you guys have the right coverage because there's nothing worse I hate than having to tell a client that that's not covered or then having to come up with thousands of dollars that should have been covered under their insurance policies. So the other thing the insurance companies are doing is deductibles are going up, but they're also the roof uh, uh, coverages are going to more ACV, actual cash value, or, or a scheduled roofing. After 15 years, really watch your policies. And watch and read your policies when you get your renewal. Read your policies, please. The first couple of pages will tell you what changes was made on your policies, what changes was made on it. Oh, my premium went down. Why did it go down? Okay, Talk well, to your friends. Yeah. Everybody else went up, and yours went down. You lost coverage. So, so just like your annual health check, you know, annual dental check, you need to do your annual insurance yep. check. Up. Bingo. Huge. Yeah. Thank you. So we're happy to do that for you guys, whether you're playing or not. Um, Luck or in your business. But, Been doing this for over 30 years. Um, but give us a call. Not as long for him. <laughs> I mean, about 10 years, about 10, 12 years. So 
but um, yeah, so that's what we are. If you guys have any questions, feel free to stop by afterwards. And um, yeah, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. I think that was one of the biggest things about the March for Fire, fire people was they bought the insurance policy 10, 20 years ago and never changed it. And prices have been going up, 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 up. And they weren't paying attention to those changes. And then when they needed it, it wasn't there. Thanks, guys. And uh, he plays some mean foosball games. <laughs> Back from my summer party. I think we're going to do foosball again this year. I think we're going to do the same part with the foosball. There's a goal maker this year. Huh? Foosball. Instead of foosball, here's the humans are on the stick kicking the ball, right, Nicole? Yes. She's a good who no, knows ball player too. Who's H O O S? Oh. -O -O no. Instead of who's ball. No biting. Humans who's ball. Come to our Christmas party. Check the videos way back from the summer party. No there. So the video's got Beth doing a big goal on Steve Vessel. I know that was like. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna want to do that video? No, I didn't. No, I didn't video. Okay. <laughs> This slide's been, I saw this, I think, way back in August, maybe, no, in March, I was in St. Croix, and I liked this. Warning, if you hang out with successful people, they will brainwash you and believe in yourself and thinking you can achieve anything. And we keep that in there and place it here, because we have a lot of successful people that come here every month. We, we've got single family, apartment, commercial, all kind of stuff. And what we're going to do next is go around the room to let these people share what they, who they are, what they do. And just for a heck no. Katie start off. Because she started this group way back in 2010. I got to come in and help her for a while. And then she changed focus. And I got the family. She got the name. But we're still best friends. Show them how to do it, Katie. Well, you're going to hear enough of me. But I'm Katie Fleming. And I own um, Fleming Real Estate. And Mostly rentals, uh, buy and holds in Columbus, Ohio is my primary area. And uh, the other part of my life is that I conduct mastermind groups to help people reach their, their goals. So we'll hear enough of me later. Um, and then the haves and the wants. So my haves, I've got mastermind groups and training. You'll find out about that. Oh, and notes that I can't read anyway because I don't have my glasses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, my wants, gosh, you know, I've got it just from being here. I mean, I just being able to drink in this great energy and, you know, I want to get your, and I always want feedback for anything that I'm trying to do. So I'll take my wants tonight and this feedback to the, to the presentation of what we did. Any moment. So if you don't have that phone number is going to be on there, but it is 303 552 7985. John Fisher Breakfast Club. Who doesn't know about John Fisher Breakfast Club? Oh, you need to go to their website and sign up for this Saturday. Bruce knows about it. Shane, you haven't been there in a while. Nicole knows that's where I met Nicole at the Breakfast Club. Awesome group. Yes, it's seven o'clock in the morning, but the traffic, there's no traffic, parking is no problem. There's a Okay, breakfast buffet, but the networking is off the hook. We do the, the uh, introductions like this, and then we just have an open popcorn style discussion on what's going on in the Denver market today. Is it still at Dazzle? Still? It's okay. still at Dazzle. Dazzle will be moving over by the theater district, but it's like spring. Oh. So we're still at Dazzle. Still at Dazzle. They love us. We love them. It's $25, but it comes with a breakfast. And networking off the hook. And the Breakfast Club is on my best success, which I'm a 50% owner. I like transparency. It's a 12 month mentoring ship program where we talk you through. I think you want to be an investor to finding a property, setting your program, your business up properly, finding a property, finding money, how to file the contracts, having to rehab, statement of work, do the whole thing to selling it or filling it. Uh, we get, Our goal is we don't let you get in the deal unless you at least. Make about 36 profit on that deal. And you get, uh, we meet twice a week or twice a month classes. We go into a rehab house that's in process and kind of walk, do a tour. Of, we move this wall for calls. We added a bathroom. We took away a bathroom. And then we go upstairs or in the living room and hold a class. Uh, and I've got a video here from one of our students. Someone hit play here. This is real quick. This has been one of our success stories. 
play, please. Hey, it's Jim with uh, Invest Success. We're down here at the December John Fisher Breakfast Club, and I've called another alumni. Glenn went through the program, and I'm just going to let him tell you what he thinks about the program, how it worked for him. Yeah, so I went through the program about a year and a half ago. Um, if you're looking for your first property, um, it's a great way to you know, yeah. run through the numbers, uh, go through the acquisition process, but also invest with confidence with Invest Success. Um, with my opportunity and my experience, I took down an off market deal duplex, um, but for about $500,000, put about $50,000 into it, and then did a bird out of it, and uh, took about half my money back out, and I was cash flowing by a uh, 1500 bucks a month. And so through and through with the help of the mentorship and the program and stuff, it really helped me out on my first dates. Okay. So you cash flow, I mean, that was your first one? Second. Second, okay. Yeah. So how many are we up to now? Uh, so I have Airbnbs that I just showed, that I just sold, uh, small duplex, single family, and I'm closing on a manufacturing facility in uh, Minnesota here in the next month or two. So I have a lot going on. And he comes to breakfast club, so he must still like us. He's still hanging around. They're good people. Ben, thank you. I hope you all have a great holiday season, and we hope to see you here at the breakfast club. Any interest in uh, the mentorship program? It's a 12-month program. We start from, I think I want to be an investor, to a, a, a guy that has multiple deals done, and that could be you, too. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, and happy Hanukkah. Anything else that means? You own that Santa hat. I missed my hat already. Uh -uh. I start wearing, I go to the King Super and buy about five boxes of candy canes. I start wearing the hat. I got like six red shirts. I have one during November and December. <laughs> Children? And older ladies. I've been in many a restaurant these groups of four women. He's like, four of you out, this girl's night out. I'm like, why are you? I had fun with it. I had fun with it. I did a lot of candy canes out. Anyway, uh, uh, twice a month we have the classes. And also, if you if once a month we do a property tour, we'll get two houses. And we'll go spend about an hour, two hours in each house. You'll walk through the house, and after a couple of classes, you'll be able to come walk in a strange house, come out 15 minutes later, and have a realistic rehab estimate. You do that. We and as you, if you're part of the program, as you go through it, as you go through it, if you find a deal, you can call us. Hey, I found this wholesale deal. Can you come meet? Me? We did this uh, last week. Tim and I met a guy, and we spent two hours on the house. Walking from up, down, in, out. I would do this, I would do that, I would do this, I would do that. We look, compared all the numbers, and now here's a number, and here's what we suggest. Are you going to do the deal or not? And he's, he's out trying to negotiate the whole stuff. And we also, who called who we are, we get a ton of actually good wholesale deals sent to us. And what we do is we ship them right out to our students. So that's how we work together. This is me. I'm a private money lender. I have a couple of funds I lend out. Currently, it's all out. Hoping it's coming back soon. I also do hard money brokering for fix and flip and rental loans. There's a website link you can get a quote in two minutes or less. And I'm also working with a company to do an unsecured line of credit. You go to a website, fill out just a very bit of brief information, and I'll connect you with the team. They'll interview you, see if it's a good fit before they do anything. If you like what they say, they'll do a soft credit pull and you move forward together. All right. Everybody. I'm starting to feel old for a couple of days one, but I do have a landline and I got it when my drink when my dad was still living because he could hear me better. <laughs> and I kept it because well I could hear me better. <laughs> so, and that the fact that I was gonna tell you that I've been in, you know, my background is about 35 years worth of, of uh education. Did I just say that to myself? Okay. So I'm reminding myself tonight. So this is about uh, mastermind groups, and I put it as using the third mind to support your goals, because how many of you have heard of Napoleon Hill or read some of that? So his, he was sort of the one attributed to coming up with the idea of mastermind. But when you think about it, you know, there were the knights of the round table and women around sitting around trees in small villages that masterminded ideas about how to make things work. But 
His idea was that you never bring a couple of minds together without a third mind being created that he referred to as the mastermind. And then it tends to sort of take on a life of its own and coming up with new and fresh ideas that you just wouldn't have been able to do all by yourself. So that's the concept behind having a mastermind. And the way I got into that, um, I've got a couple of passions. One is that I am passionate about real estate. I've been drawn to it for, I think, since I was a little girl. But my background is primarily in education. I I taught at CU for about eight years, a medical ethics class, and ran a uh, sexuality education program. Hopefully, you're the combination there. I mean, <laughs> I really can go into all the different educational pieces of that. But um, and then I um, and then I was education director for Boulder County AIDS Project, and then I wrote curriculum for Boulder Valley School District for eight years and implemented that by teaching teachers and working with teachers about implementing the curriculum. So my background is was very much about education, but my approach from way back when, because it just made sense to me, is the more you involve people in what they do, in their education, and in, in their learning, the more they're engaged and they're not just listening, the more actually gets encoded biologically. I mean, from neuroscience, it actually is some good research around that, that the more you actually do, the brain changes. Um, there are these neurotransmitters that actually grow as a result of you being engaged. And so even at the university, when I had these uh, pre-med students, their primary approach was to have them do panel debates, panel discussions, really having to think about different people's points of views and involved in that. So it's always been my love. And when I started Investors Network Community, as this real estate investing group in 2010, and Jim and I became partners, it was really with the intention of, let's really engage people in this process. And Jim, has Jim done a beautiful job with Rig? Oh, yeah. See? Outstanding. Such a beautiful, no, you, you've gone on. Um, so again, masterminding is just the idea of bringing a team of colleagues together. And, and in my, there's a couple of different models for that. Jane, you obviously do a mastermind where they're, they're not one-time events, but it sounds like you repeat them over time. The same people come back together periodically. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe new people come in occasionally. And so sometimes you'll have masterminds that are one-time events where people just come and they brainstorm with each other, they share ideas, they share resources. And then the mastermind uh, model that I use in my groups is that we meet monthly. People first start off by developing their, their plan of action. And then, then every month you commit to, I am going to do this before, by golly, 24 hours before the next meeting, you find yourself going, oh, I want everybody to do this, and then, then you get it done. So there's a lot of accountability um, involved with those. But the cool thing about it is it really helps you to clarify your ideas because sometimes we just need to hear ourselves talk, and then and that's maybe all we need. And then, the, of course, to get feedback, it gets you very enthusiastic because it's it's sometimes it's just hard when you're doing it in your own office or at your own kitchen table or wherever you work to get as enthusiastic as you do when you've got a group of people around. And it helps you stay on track and really productive. Because how many of us just tend to sort of get off track a little. And sometimes it's just hard energetically to get back in the game, right? Once you come off track. And what um, my particular approach is, is uh, you'll sort of see sort of a feng shui approach, I guess, is that it incorporates your business into your whole life, and it doesn't make the only goals that you work on just your business. It's, you know, we're whole people. We have relationships, and we have families, and we have interests, and we have travel, and we have these other parts. So, and for me, the most important thing is I still know that I can go to my mastermind groups that I've had years ago, and they've already ended, and they've got my back. If I need anything, and I've just developed such deep friendships, and I still have friendships with people and the new masterminds that you're in. But probably the number one thing that I love about them 
is they really keep you accountable. So again, if you promised someone and if you found that, you know, maybe in your own partnership or in a group, if you tell somebody, I'm going to do this, it's just pretty powerful how that, that works. So that's why we're engaging in this tonight is just that, that exercise of doing that. Um, I just want to go over, I'm telling you that it's important not to talk at people, but I do think that this part is, it's important to acknowledge. I will put that on the Facebook page, uh, I'd say either tonight or tomorrow, so that'll be available. Uh, we're just going to have to an upcoming event, and then we're going to network some. Did that success? January 2nd, that's passed. But uh, two weeks from there, we're going to be doing it again. Uh, for, if you're interested in our class, Bruce was at our last one. If you're interested in the mentoring program, you can come to the first class for free. Like I said, we normally meet in an actual house where there's a you know, rehab going on. Uh, this Saturday, John Fisher's Breakfast Club. Go sign up. If you've never been there, you won't be disappointed. Great breakfast, great traffic, no parking problems, and networking off the hook. Oh, yes. This is uh, not my group, not our is that success. This is the guy that attends the uh, breakfast club on a regular basis. They're talking about instead of, you know, when you go build a building of steel, you pretty much can't regrow steel. They're going to build big buildings out of actual timber, lumber that you can go harvest, go build a building, and replant, and, re and you just keep going. He's got a mastermind group coming up January 20th through the 21st. If you go, if you're interested, there's a event on the our Facebook page that he's giving Rig a discount, so you get him a discount, and get him a little bit cheaper there. And there's more information about it on the website. Who knows this guy? <laughs> he's here every year uh, due to the, all the chaotic stuff going on in our world. In the last two years, he's been here twice a year. But next month, he will be here. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Day. Your significant other, you know, we may, I'm gonna try to figure out what something special we can do. We'll try to do something special for Valentine's Day, but I promise you, this room will be filled next month. So, if you're interested in coming, I would suggest you go to Eventbrite and get your ticket now because this room will be filled. And once we hit a certain number, the ticket sells are it. If you call me on Tuesday, I'm like, we're overbooked. Sorry. He's going to pack the house. And as a teaser, uh, I believe he's going to be on the clubhouse, Greg's clubhouse tomorrow night. So he'll do kind of a, a teaser introduction to this. He'll be on the clubhouse with me tomorrow night. He's an awesome guy. People from all over the world following. Who's tired of the cold already? <laughs> How would you like to be sitting on the beach with a little drink with an umbrella in it, or cooling, or shopping, or scuba diving, or deep sea fishing, or we're a bunch of investors. We're going to look for real estate investment properties down there. This time next month, and as I say, thank you for coming. Good night. I'm going to pack up the H. He's going to drive me to the house and drive me to the airport, and I'm flying to Belize. We've got some people from Denver that are getting that close to buying tickets. I've got some people from Texas may join us. The other lady from Oregon is going to join us. We're all going to go down. We're staying at a beachside resort. I've got a, four, a cabin that sleeps four, basically right off the beach. Get this price. Guess how much? Come on. 100 bucks. <laughs> $125 <laughs> $125 for a beach side of camp and sleep sport. Anyway, that's coming up next month. You can go to our Facebook page. It's there. Here's the link to the uh, resort I'm staying at. I would suggest if you go right now, I think uh, United has a yeah. Go to flight, Google Flights, Google Flights. So we're home investing. Who knows about that? <laughs> Yay! We had a rig clubhouse chat. It was off the hook. Who knows Vince Koo? Former member of Invest Success. He has two homes in the Denver area. He's looking for more. He's doing it. He loves it. He makes no less than a thousand dollar profit coming in after all the bills are paid. We're gonna have Oxford Home come and then they're going to present from the Oxford home aspect. If you work with us, this is what we'll do. Vince will be here to share. I work with them, and this is how I am at the home. So that's coming up. That was a great clubhouse chat. That's coming up, and cash flow game right back in that corner or this corner. 
we just come together very informal. We play together. We win. If you win, you start over. If you go bankrupt, you jump back in. It's about having fun and working together and getting to know each other. House hacking. Who knows what house hacking is? Jeffrey White, his wife, when they started, they didn't even own a hammer. They didn't know anything about rehabbing, reflipping, or flipping, or any of that. And I think it's five years. He equaled his W 2 income with uh, passive income from house hacking. He also did a very awesome clubhouse chat and some of our recorded our recordings. But he will be here April 10th. He's excited. He's young. Man, young kid. <laughs> <laughs> you're successful. That makes you get successful people out there. And if you're a member of Burn on Clubhouse, you've heard the voice. If you were in our, um, May, our November, Joe Screes was there. He will be here and he will be talking. If you know agents, if they come, they will receive CE credits. It's going to be investor and agent friendly. That's all the way out to June. So we got to fill in May somewhere. Hey, guess what? We're in a brewery. They're up late. Need you all to keep us out of here. It's 10, so you got about an hour to chill out. Relax. Thanks for coming. First time is what do you think? Thumbs up. I got to say two thumbs up. Glad you're here. Happy New Year. Come out next month. Book your tickets now to see Manfred. I love you. Thank you. Happy New Year.